What's going on, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. Let's get right to it. Don't want to waste any time because I'm already a few minutes late, but that's okay. So this, I think this is the first time ever I'm doing a vertical watercolor painting. Um, unfortunately, I can't fit the entire thing, so the bottom is like right here at the bottom, but the top is up here, like another inch or so, inch and a half. So. I'll try to get it on there as much as I can. The top is just greenery and the bottom is just kind of like uh, tile and stuff, so it's not that big of a deal. Here's the reference photo. Uh, let me get this thing in here the right way. Forgot to do that. But yeah, that's pretty much what my painting's gonna be. This one's a little more vertical, it seems, than my paper, but um, we'll make it work here. I'm just gonna sketch this on here quickly. Anyway, how's everybody doing? Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, I appreciate all the members out there supporting me every month for two or one ninety nine or something. Greatly appreciated. Helps me out a little bit. Helps me, uh, you know, keep doing these streams consistently. Buy paint and paper and materials and stuff keeps me going. So I really love the light on this painting, on this picture. That's why I wanted to do a painting. I thought, I saw the lighting on this, this painting and I was like, all right, this is gonna make a great painting if I can pull it off. So that's what I'm gonna try to do here. Just trying to get this important feature laid out on the page but not too detailed, you know, just a quick sketch. Something like that. Uh, looks like I have more space over here. I don't really want that. I want more space over here, if anything. So we'll just modify the width. So these two lines. Okay, feel better about that, I think. And now, it's a little plant here that's growing. Like I said, not too detailed. I know it's probably kind of hard to see this. Let's tone it down a little bit. There we go. And focus it. Um, there's a little planter here. It's pretty nice, I guess. Just adds a little bit of depth into the painting, slightly, because there's not a whole lot of depth here. There's some greenery down here. We can kind of make it look a little more wild than it actually is. It's a nice little vine growing across the door. I like that. There's all these lovely little pink flowers, so... Um... I might use wax resist, I think, for those. Kind of dot them around the painting a bit. Seems seems like wax resist will do the job for that. Uh, I can try to leave some of them the white of the paper, possibly. Um, you know, if I draw some of these in here, kind of try to paint around them. Uh, But I love the shadowing on this door. I think that's really going to be the... Like, like I said, the light effect on this is really incredible. So it's kind of what I want to try to capture a little bit if I can. Or a lot. Try to capture that a lot. That's really my focal point right here. Boom. And then these little bits of light flowers and stuff over this shadow. So... Just starting out with a quick sketch. Some of this piping and stuff over here on this side, eh, it's not exactly necessary. I might leave some of that out. We could add a little bit of vines on this side just to kind of balance a little bit slightly. Um, 
but we can leave it a, a bit more bare as well. Just add some brick kind of texture effects or something. Um, nothing too crazy. Okay. Yeah, the wax resists. It'll it'll look it'll give a nice texture or whatever for the flowers and stuff. Should be fine. Um, although the middle of them is more of a darker pink, so I'm 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 a little iffy about using that. Um, if I'm being honest, because I don't want to completely block and have it be white. And they are like a light pink. So I could just try to be careful about it. Maybe I'll try to do that. Maybe I'll just try to be careful and suggest. Um, maybe I'll put a few areas of a little bit of wax resist just for light, like the white of the paper. Try to preserve that. Um, so like maybe here against the shadow, we'll put just like a small bit of wax resist, maybe a little bit here. So the reason I'm doing this just for very, very bright areas, just to, you know, save some of the white of the paper. Um, let's see, we'll make this into a flower. Flower here. We'll put some flowers over here as well. Not too much, okay. That'll do the trick. Um, yep, I'll show the reference photo one more time. Here's the reference photo. Just for everybody, so. There we go. One of the features here is a little door knocker. It's pretty nice. Nice and dark. It's a good, good contrast. Kind of like it. And the mail slot. And the mail slot's kind of cool. And the door handle here. And then these little architectural features under here. All right kind of cool. Try to add some of that in there. Okay. Um, I could start out with like an overall wash. Uh, but I'm afraid to lose some of those flowers. So I think, I think, hmm. How could I do this one? How could I do this one? I have an idea. I think we'll do yellow ochre around the whole thing. And then we'll do a cooler blend on the shadow and then cooler at the bottom. Right? Because everything else is pretty dark. Not dark, but it's, it's not light. So um, Let's try to start out that way. Uh, where's my spray bottle here? I'll just, so I have the spray bottle, just water in it, a little bit of water. I'm just gonna spray my palette here, all my colors. So that's what I'm doing off to the side here. So just kind of wetting my palette overall a lot. Okay, and uh, I'll probably be using that uh, quite a lot uh, to keep my paper wet as I'm doing these washes and stuff. But yeah, I think I'll start out warm because this is a nice warm light effect that I'm trying to go for.
<clears throat> okay. All right, so we're going to start out and paint a happy little tree here, and um, yeah, you guys know the rest. So let's see if I can leave some flower shapes here. Even ones I didn't draw out, just try to leave. So let's let's spray I'm gonna spray the edges. Maybe we wet my paper a bit just so that we have kind of get some softer edges and stuff. I'm gonna cool it off down here at the bottom. Uh, but I'm not done using yellow ochre, so I'm going to keep going with this at the top. So this is just the first wash, first stage that I'm putting down here. This stage doesn't really matter that much, um, but I, I just kind of want like an overall warmth to the painting underneath, and I'm going to let some of this show through in the end. So. It's a little bit necessary. And the brickwork here is pretty warm in the sun and stuff, so it's nice to have that. I can mix in a few other little colors here and there if I want. You know, I can put in alizarin crimson or other kinds of colors, but for now, it doesn't really matter. Try to keep some of this soft at the bottom. And now I'm going to go with ultramarine blue and uh, transparent red oxide. Get like a grayish color. Still kind of warm though. I mean, I don't want it super cool or anything, but just try to cool that down here at the bottom. Um, Try to put the first little layer here down of some shadowing. Keeping all this very light, very light. I may go a little warmer at the edges of these shadows.
So this probably looks pretty crazy right now, and uh, this is where I kind of always give up um, and feel like I'm gonna fail with this painting. But uh, I know I just gotta, it's only the first layer, just gotta keep going. Believe in myself and keep going, you know? But you can see that light effect, that's what I'm going for. I'm trying to preserve the white of this paper for the this light part. I probably painted too many shadows. It's okay, it's not panic right now. It's just, let's just keep going. Uh, we're gonna dry this real quick and uh, see if I missed any questions or anything. When you wet the paper, does it cause the watercolor to be sucked up under the tape at the borders? No, it doesn't. You wet the paper every time you paint, every time I paint with watercolor. I mean, even if I just paint it wet with the brush, it's still wetting the paper. I mean, that's the whole point of the tape. The tape's not keeping it down to the page, it's just creating a, a white edge, a, a sharp edge. Very rarely it'll get underneath the tape, but most of the time it doesn't. Um, like 95% of the time, it doesn't get under the tape at all. Thanks, Fully. I appreciate it. Glad you're learning a lot. Uh, this is this is called artist tape. I'm not really sure exactly what it's it's different than painter's tape. Uh, painter's tape doesn't really stick at all, from what I imagine. But um, this is artist tape, acid free, and uh, doesn't rip the watercolor paper at all. Never never had a problem with it in that way. Um, it keeps the water out and the paint out that's all i really care about so um, it doesn't leave any residue or anything like that so do you enjoy negative painting no i don't i really don't um it's very difficult it's very difficult to uh do i don't particularly enjoy <laughs> negative painting at all yeah <laughs> I'm interested in you. I mean, I'm interested with the subject. <laughs> uh, thank you for that comment. I appreciate it. What kind of paint are you using? Um, watercolor paint? M. Graham is the brand. Let's see. This is almost dry, folks. So just trying to catch up with some answers here. Yes, I use tape that is not so sticky, but it's not, it's not, it's not not sticky, if that mean if, uh, if that makes sense. Like, it's stick, it, it's sticky enough to where it's sticky, but it's not super sticky to where it causes problems, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of an in-between thing. <laughs> uh. Yeah, there's actually a link to the tape right there in the chat, uh, the Amazon, that my sister Amanda posted, so. Okay, I think we're getting pretty, I think we're good here. I can go to the next layer. Hopefully this is going to look good. Hopefully this is going to look good. Um, I'm a little concerned about the focal point, but... I think I'll be okay. I think I'll be okay. So I think next we go with the green and then the pink flowers, green and pink, fla uh, green leaves, pink flowers, the plants, the planter, all that kind of stuff. And then 
After that, we do the shadows in the greenery, shadows on the wall, and then hit. If we need to hit the the door again with another more shadowing, then we could do that. Um, but I feel pretty good. I th I feel. I think I feel good about this. Uh, with negative painting, it takes a bit of pre-planning, says Nathan Dixon. Yeah, it's annoying. It's it's not even, it's just annoying. <laughs> it, it's like you literally have to like, yeah, I mean, draw everything out and like, it's, it sucks. It's not fun to me. I like having fun when I paint, you know, that's why I do it. But some people could see that as like, you know, kind of meditative. Like, I'm sure there's times when I don't mind it but I'm not a fan of it really, if I had to choose, you know. The ground changed color. Yeah, it kind of did. Um, that's what happens when it dries though. It, things always change color, but I knew that I knew it was gonna happen anyway. Um, the ground's a little dark, but I think once we darken everything else, once we put in the shadows and the midtones and everything, this will look pretty light. Um, it's hard to get the exact, lighting scenario here for the camera folks. I apologize. But it's a very nifty camera so I like using it. Okay, so we can move this down. I'll start at the top here pretty much and uh, I'm just gonna go in with the green. So I just mixed up a nice little green here of cadmium yellow and uh, viridian. So we get a nice Nice green. If I want, I can mix in some purple or some red or whatever. Sorry about that. I can mix in some transparent red oxide, make it warmer. Um, you know, there's a bunch of things I can do with this green color that I have. But I always try to mix my own greens. Um, but anyway, this isn't the focal point, so we'll just... You know, it is an, it's an important part of this painting, this greenery, but I don't want to get too bogged down in the leaves and everything. And of course, you guys know I'm going to do some splattering and stuff, so that'll come a bit later. Add some texture and stuff. Um... Okay, and I'm definitely going to start varying the color a bit as I go. Um, so what I mean by that is some areas I'll add like more yellow to it, so it'll be, you know, more of a yellowy green. Some areas I can make it cooler, even though it's in the light still. I'm kind of painting light plus mid-tones and stuff here, so gotta be careful here because I don't want to paint greenery where there isn't greenery so now I added some ultramarine blue to it so I can kind of start cooling it down on this side and down here I'm gonna avoid the door a little bit right now um, Yeah, painting's pretty difficult. Painting painting can be a pain. Can't say painting without saying pain. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> kind of lost a lot of the flowers there, but hey, kept some of them. Kept some of them so far. And I'll I'll paint in uh I'll paint in some pink and stuff soon. Um So I made up the greenery on this side, so we'll just kind of make some leaves and stuff, leaf shapes. 
like kind of it's kind of it's blending out you know um like it's less less greenery and stuff on this side as it goes downward it's pretty good Just add some splattering okay i like that I kind of paint pretty crazily with watercolors. Uh, every painting I do is, I kind of attack it in a different manner. Just kind of depends on what I'm feeling at the time and how I feel about the subject and how I can, how I feel like I can achieve the what I'm going for. See, we can add more blue to this, more blues and purples. Like it's down here, maybe. On like some small vines and stuff. Probably put those in a little bit later. That'll really be a nice feature for this painting, have these little lines and vines growing and things happening. Um, so this little this little vine is kind of connecting across the door, but I don't want to I don't want to really connect it. I'm just going to visually do it. So what what it, what I mean by that is it's going to look like it, to your eye that these things are connected just because they're close to one another, you know. Like that line there that I drew, it's kind of like a stem to one of the one of the flowers, but it's it's broken, you know. It's, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um And that's kind of what creates the it's kind of the magic of painting cuz it, it it just causes the viewer to like do that kind of that thing, you know, like causes the viewer to do the thing, you know what I mean? Like um, kind of put it together in your own mind. A bit. Let's see, I do these little dots like floating leaves and stuff. Um, even though plants don't really grow like that. <laughs> you don't have these floating dots and everything. But it just gives it a sense of life, like, hey, this thing's growing, you know? Um, but in your mind, you connect it all together as like one plant, you know? Or at least that's how I try to, to do it, try to make you do that. Um, so I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. I needed to put the blue pot in there first. I'll do that right now. It's kind of a very dark blue, but I'll add some purple into it because the shadow is kind of purple, so I want things to harmonize a bit. So I, I want to repeat the same colors I've been using, you know, like purples, blue, blue purples, warms, things like that. Yeah, my mom was on here earlier, but I, I don't see her now. She must be uh, busy doing something. It's all good. Not everybody can watch every day, you know? I do a lot of live streams, so it's hard to watch everything all the time. And I understand that. There's a nice shadow back here with this pot. We'll add more of that in later, but... Just wanted to get some of that in there now. We can soften some of that, maybe even splatter some of that. 
The splattering really helps because it, it, it really makes it seem like there's a bunch of greenery and stuff like happening, you know, growing. Just gives it, I just don't want to get any on that white door. I want to be careful about that. I probably will eventually, but I don't want to do that. So anyway, let me zoom out here. So I think we're looking pretty good so far. It looks pretty nice. It's getting a very wild feel and then more interest around the door. That's kind of what I want, more splatters and more broken up leaves and stuff around this focal area. You know, everything up here is pretty basic, you know, pretty boring, pretty blah. So, okay, now we're gonna put in those pink flowers, so. All that is is some alizarin crimson. I don't really have a magenta. I probably need to get like a magenta on my palette, but alizarin crimson will be fine, I think. Just lighten it up, use a lot of water. I can always mix a little bit of ultramarine violet deep in there, which is the purple that I use. So that'll just kind of Give it a nice little cool tinge to it. So this part's gonna be kinda hard to see because it's so light, what I'm putting down. It's really just the center of the flowers that I'm putting down. Um, hopefully it'll look like flowers. In the end, in the end, that's what I'm hoping for. Ah, it's really hard. I wish I could. It's much more saturated in person. This uh, camera doesn't, cannot capture the colors very well of my paintings. It's always a, yeah, it's always annoying for me. But I do with what we got, you know. Yeah, we lost a lot of these flowers, but I can just dot around some magentas and stuff. Not a big deal. Okay, something like that. Yep, that's a pot down there. Definitely a pot. Um, Haven't gotten into the shadowy stages yet. The really dark darks. I got a little dark here with the greens, but um, I think they'll still look light even when I put this shadow, once I put the shadows on, they'll look a bit light. And uh, they look a little bit darker on the camera, to be honest. They're not that dark in person. Uh, you really have to see art in person if you really wanna get the full effect of it. And there's people on my stream who have purchased my art and they can attest to that. And uh, right now I just wanna say, be sure to check out my website. I got my paintings on there. You can see paintings and drawings I've done uh, over at SchaeferFineArt.com. Paintings and drawings for sale if you're interested in that or if you know anyone that might be interested. Your mom, your aunt, your grandmama, everybody. Sister, brother, cousin, aunt, uncle, everybody. Check it out. Uh, I also have a page on my website where you can support me. You can donate to me if you like the videos I do here on YouTube or um, or if you just feel like you have too much money and you want to give me some of it, I'd be happy to take it off your hands. You know, I got some uh, I got some ways I could use it. It'd be pretty nice. Uh, I have some t-shirts as well and a Patreon page. You can support me there monthly. Or I have a band camp. You can just check out my music that I make and maybe buy a track or two if you want. Find all that at uh, SchaeferFineArt.com. I appreciate it. Um, so anyway, let's see. <clears throat> I'm using 140 pound paper. I don't know how many grams it is, to be honest. Where did you use the wax resist? I used it on some of the flowers, but it's, I only used very, very little. It's kind of hard to see. I'll show you. It's, it's easier to see it in person, but you see that little tiny bit of texture there? That's the wax resist. Um, you know, there's other little spots that I kind of kept white on the flowers. You know, just little tiny areas like that. 
um, around the painting, but I didn't use a whole lot. I didn't use a whole lot. Um, some of this, I'm, I'm probably gonna have to like try to soften some of this later on. There's a lot of hard edges, but uh, maybe they won't matter once I put those shadows in there and stuff. Um, what's going on, Deborah? Thanks for tuning in. Can you help me learn how to draw? Yeah, go watch my videos. I got like over a thousand videos now and I got a ton of live streams of me drawing stuff. Um, I got a lot of videos about drawing. I mean, just go to my channel page, hit videos. There you go, whole library waiting to be discovered by you. So I'm just gonna dry this real quickly. It's, it's kind of already dry, but this will just dry it a little more quickly. Um, Splattering makes the painting less flat, I guess, and gives more dimension. Yeah, it can. It just gives, for me, it gives it more life. You know, this is stuff that's growing, it's alive. So splattering just helps, gives a little bit of texture. It helps just give that effect, like, hey, this stuff is alive. You know, it gives it a little bit of movement. At least for me, that's what it does. Painting is easier than drawing, I think. Uh, I don't think so, to be honest. I don't think so. I think it can be in some ways, but with painting, drawing, you have to worry about, here's the thing about painting. If you think painting's easier, when I'm painting this the whole time, I'm drawing while I'm painting the whole time. So with drawing, you don't have to worry about color. With painting, you have values. Values, color, drawing, and edges with drawing, you don't have to worry about color. You worry about value, proportions, edges, and the drawing of it. With painting, you have to worry about all the drawing stuff plus color. And then with watercolor, you have to worry about timing as well and the, the dampness of the paper. There's a whole different aspect to it. If I was just drawing, I mean, I'm just sitting here like, I just gotta make sure the proportions are right and then all I gotta do is just make sure the values are right. I mean, it's not that, it's not that hard. The shapes make themselves in painting. I mean, yeah, it's true. I, I think, I think for me, what I would say is painting is a lot faster than drawing. Like if I had to draw this photo, I mean, God, it would take me forever, you know. But painting it, it's like, yeah, you just it makes it's so much it's so much quicker and easier to make the shapes. I get what you're saying. I agree with that. But in terms of overall, I think painting is way more difficult. But um, yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, the shapes do make themselves, you know. Like one little, you know, I can make this bush in like a few seconds, but if I was drawing that, I gotta sit there and draw every little line, every little thing, like, yeah, it's much more, much more of a pain. All right, so let's go in with the shadows now, really start making this painting come to life, I think. That's what I hope anyway. Um, so what I'm gonna do is get a cooler green here. <laughs> That's a good point, Nathan. Nathan says, and with mixed media, you have to worry about all of it. Very true. That's very true. <laughs> I mean, this is technically mixed media, right? I started out with a pencil sketch. That's mixed media. Uh, not exactly, but, you know. Okay. Um, so I'm just mixing up a cool green here, cool dark green. And uh, this is where kind of the negative painting comes into play. I got to be careful. I got to make certain shapes that uh, that make this make this uh, look right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wow. We got a hundred something viewers tonight. This is a record. Thanks, guys. I appreciate this. Yeah. Make sure you share this with any everybody who would be interested in this. If you know anybody, I'd appreciate it. Share it up, man. Share it up. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. What's going on, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. Hope everybody's doing well. Okay, so check it out. Um, I don't know what I'm doing, as always. I mean, I know a little bit about what I'm doing, but uh, this part's a little tricky. This is tricky. So I got I got to be careful here because I'm gonna I'm trying to simplify at the same time. But I also want to leave some light green shapes. So what I have to do is I kind of have to paint around and make leaf shapes. And I suck at this, man. I, I, 
this is a, this is a struggle for me i've i've been doing these kinds of paintings for years like even from life i painted like pomegranates and stuff like on a pomegranate tree and like all these little leaves and stuff i mean i suck at it so uh, hopefully uh let's try to soften some of that so you see the water right there i sprayed on there boom just softened everything So I'm trying to, we can warm some of this up too. I'll put in some transparent red oxide in some areas where it gets a little bit darker, creates a little more richness. It's probably hard to see that with this, uh, the way this camera is, unfortunately. But, uh, so I'm just trying to focus on some main shadow shapes here and uh, keep it Pretty simplified, but you can see how it gets a little warmer, a little bit darker here than up here. I wish the colors were a little bit better with this camera, but it's, it seems much too cool on camera. No worries, Annabelle. I was late to my party too. I was late to the party. I, I didn't, I was supposed to start at 510 today and I started at 515, 520 or something. So. I was actually late to my own party that I planned, that I scheduled, so it's all good. Better late than never, right? That's what somebody says. I don't know who says it. Whoever they is, they say that. I think it's the Illuminati. I think they say that. Okay. So I'm just trying to... Like I said, pay attention to these shadows, but I, I want to, I'm trying to simplify this because I don't want this to be all crazily complicated, you know, and we can even, we can have some fun up while I'm up here. We'll have some fun, Let's bring some splattering to the party. You know what I mean? Okay. Boom. The person who di disliked this probably was jealous. They weren't as good as him. Well, Suki the Potato Cat, you're, who knows? A lot of people out there that just, uh, they hate their life or it's just, you know, it's some like 10 year old kid who just like dislikes everything. Like, yeah, big deal. I don't really pay attention to it. So now I'm just kind of using my finger to soften some things and spread, spread it around. Finger painting, man, it's a really effective because you can be very sensitive with it, you know, um, when you do it. I think I'm going to go in, back in. I'm going to have to add some mid-tones here because I kind of lost some of the mid-tones. Or I really haven't put them in. Um, we kind of have light and shadow going on, but we're going to need some, like, just more kind of a darker green in some areas, you know, on the edges of these shadows Let's see if we can soften some of this I want this all to be soft right now try to keep it wet okay simplify simplify we'll kind of try to connect all these darks at least visually I kill some of them here. Uh, Ry Ry Rithy Balcom I'm, says, I'm going through a pretty hard time right now, and this is helping me. Thank you. Hey, I appreciate that. I'm glad it's helping in some way. Uh, I'm kind of struggling here a bit with this painting, but I, it's going to come together. We just got to be patient here. It's going to come together. I'm kind of in the middle stage right now of this painting and it's always it's always it looks pretty rough in the in the middle, you know. But uh I've no doubt this is going to come together pretty nicely, I hope. So, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it.
yeah, it looks pretty wild right now. But uh, once this dries off, it'll dry a little bit lighter. And uh, let's see if I can get some, let's see if I'm gonna use a smaller brush here. I wonder if I can get some, uh, some leaf shapes to cut in or something, or at least just take off some of this darkness in some areas, you know. Ah, this brush is not really working. Let's get another one. Where's this crappy brush I always use? Here we go. Okay. Let's get this crappy brush. Let's see. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, this evening. I don't know what's happening this evening, but I guess nothing's going on. Everybody's tuning in. Appreciate it. How's everybody doing? We're making records right now. This is the most people I've ever had, which is pretty crazy. Um, so I'm just trying to soften some things, basically. Um, just creating some variety within the shadows I had. Um, but I don't want it to be too crazy or anything. I'm just... Okay. I think we need to work on the door now, bring the door up with the rest of the painting. Because that's really my focal point. Right now we're kind of losing it. Um, so... I think... I think we're going to darken the shadows on the door. And then we'll put, once we put that line, that dark line around the door, it's going to really pop, I think. I kind of lost the top of the door there that I wanted. Ah, that's a bummer, but uh, I can I can add some of that in. Uh, actually, I can add some of that in. We can bring it back. We can bring it back. Okay, all right. Uh, just wanted to check the chat for a second, make sure I didn't miss any questions or anything. So I think I think the top of this door, I can try to bring some of that back. I'll show like some greenery in front of it, but I do want, it's a little damp right now, but uh, it's okay. So I'm just trying to um, trying to make it look a little interesting, you know. I don't want it don't want it to be the same everywhere, you know. We'll make it a little lighter at the bottom so that maybe it looks like lights kind of hitting it down here. Maybe on this side as well. We'll keep it more dark up up in here in the shadows. Okay, okay, okay. Let's be calm. We can do this. We can do this. We can do this. I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush now, like this kind of round brush. All right. <clears throat> do you ever, do I ever use stencils? No, I do not. don't really um I kind of just draw and paint just do my own thing for the most part so I'm just getting some cool cool shadow here cool kind of ultramarine purpley blue shadow color we're just gonna 
unfortunately we already had this green over it so that's uh, I should have waited but um, that's okay we can try to paint around that or and yeah, we'll just do our best here it's all we can it's all we can do right just do our best try to save some of these flower shapes as well There we go. So you see how it's strengthening that kind of helped it a bit. I'm a little worried about, I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried here. But it's okay. I think I think we'll be all right. Just keep going. We'll just keep going. Soften that a little bit. All right, have some splattery, little splattery shadows. Okay, it needs, I know what it needs. It needs a little bit more. Broken up shadowing here. There we go. There we go. Looks pretty nice. Don't want to overdo it. Don't want to overdo it. Might have already overdone it, but it's okay. Just keep keep working with it. Just keep working with it. Um, oh, somebody has a request or something? Uh, did I miss something? Just post it again if I miss something. Um, watercolor, Neil Cole says watercolor painting is the best of an emergency from a John Singer Sargent. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> that's what it feels like. Uh, Definitely feels like that right now. So, um, okay, it's a little too dark. Maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. Let's see. It's just. Just try to follow that. Broken pattern a bit. And some shadowing under here. Okay. I think what's really gonna make the door is when I put those little, the darker, like the door knocker and the mail slot, the door the uh, door handle. When I put that stuff on there next, I think that's, that's gonna bring this thing to life a little bit, hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully. Um,
Okay. Do you sell these live stream paintings? Yes, I do. I do. I sell them on my uh, I sell them on my website. You can go to SchaeferFineArt.com. I got to add a few on there, but uh, I have drawings on there for sale, and I have these paintings that I do. Um, so yeah, definitely check out my website. So that's where I I post up all these paintings. I have a ton of paintings on there right now and drawings and stuff. So definitely be sure to check those out, guys, if you're interested. I got to catch up a little bit. There's a kind of a stack of paintings from the last week or two that I haven't haven't loaded on there yet. But uh, if yeah, if you do ever see a live stream painting and you don't see it on my website, then just you know I have a contact form on there. You can contact me and just say. I've had people do that. Contact me and say, hey, where's the is the painting from live stream 52 for sale? You know, I don't see that one on here. And uh, yeah, I've sold it to people because I just ha I didn't put it up yet and uh, yeah they ended up getting it first so yeah definitely cool with doing that I wish you guys could see this whole thing in its entirety um, but since it's a vertical it's hard to see it I can't fit it on the screen all at one time but it's okay okay um, Yeah, it's getting there. It's coming together. It's a little chaotic right now, but uh, it's getting there. Slowly, slowly but surely. I'm just going to keep working on some small things at the moment to ease my mind a little bit, give me a little break. Um... So just creating a little bit of form here, trying to anyway. Uh, okay. Just on some of the plants there. Not a big deal, but I think that kind of helped. That really gave a little bit more dimension. I might have to do some of that to some of the, you know, mo basically, basically I want to keep all this kind of not important, you know, soften some of that stuff. But I, I want the focus to come in right around here and in this area. Um, so I'll end up, you know, sharpening some things up there and try to figure that out. Um, you know, we'll add some more darks and stuff. Um, Oh, do it sideways? Okay, that's, that's a good idea. I can show the whole thing right now sideways, I guess. This looks pretty dark because I just, uh, this looks pretty dark here because I just put a bunch of water on it, but it's not really that dark. It's just wet, that's all. So, yeah, that's what it looks like sideways. But, um,. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I think we're doing we're doing pretty well. What does it need? What does it need? It definitely needs the. Okay, let's dry this door area real quick. So how's everybody doing? Anybody have any questions or anything? If I missed anything, let me know. Um, I apologize. A lot a lot of the chat going on right now. You softened a bit because the flowers steal the show, right? Says Matthias. Um. I softened it because I just, I don't want it to be too, uh, I don't want any too hard edges around the, the edge of the paper. I want your focus to be here, so I want the hard edges and stuff to be there. I might soft go over some of those flowers maybe, I don't know, but it looks okay right now, I think. I think a final a finishing touch, like I was saying earlier, is I'm going to put in some darker like vines to kind of guide your eye around the painting a little bit. I think that's going to help to bring everything together. Because uh, right now it's it's so simplified that you don't really see anything going on here. But as soon as I just add some like vines and stems and stuff, um, I think it'll bring it all together. 
So. Yep, it just needs some hardware on the door. Exactly. That's what I'm. That's what I'm hoping anyway. So I'm just trying to dry the door a bit more so that. Uh, What happens to the wax resist? Does it just disappear or melt when you use the hair dryer on it? Well, this isn't a hair dryer, it's just a fan. So there's no uh, temperature with this. A hair dryer might melt it, um, but it kind of, it just stays on the paper. Um, it's like it's like using a clear crayon. It doesn't go away or anything. And it's not like a big thing on the paper or anything. It doesn't do anything. It's not like a masking fluid where there's like a lot of fluid on the paper or anything that you have to peel off. There's nothing, it's nothing like that. It just gives a little bit of texture. So I like, yeah, I really like the softness here. I might soften that corner a bit here. This, this is a little too, too much going on there. But, um, okay. Um, Right, I think we're getting. I think we're getting somewhere. We're getting the idea here. I really wish you guys could see the colors the way they are in life. It's a bit warmer in person. I'll show you here. Let me see if I know this isn't going to work as well, but maybe the webcam will show you guys. So that's where I'm at with it. You see that flower really sticks out. So I'm gonna have to soften that a little bit. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. You know, but it's it's looking pretty good so far. I think. Um, and it's gonna look good once I take the tape off, I think. But see the, the camera, it gives it this green tinge and cool kind of colors, but it's, it's definitely more, uh, it's more warm in person. It is a little cool looking though. Um, not super warm as it could be. Not as warm, maybe it is, it's hard to tell. It's hard for me to tell. but I can add some warmth to this thing just subtly there, certain areas. So I'm just glazing with like a warmer color. It's probably hard to see, but it's just heating up some areas, you know, especially up under here where it's dark. And some of these areas over here can be, oh, I like a warm dark. See that warmth, it's really, it, I think that warm is gonna help bring, bring some warmth to this painting overall. It needs like a warm dark. Uh, really contrasts nicely with that cool purple in the middle. So, okay, let's, let's do the, let's do the door hardware. Let's see if I can do this. I'll try to keep that kind of warm too. Not super warm, but just a warm dark. Uh, I wish I could dry brush that. Let's see if I can get some dry brushing going. Just mixing up some color here, folks. Give me one second. Just trying to get a nice warm dark for this uh, Need steps to the to ground the door. Yeah, I know, I know. We're getting there. I got a little bit there, but uh, we'll we'll get there. Don't worry. Yeah, I can put a little mat there if you. I mean, it's it doesn't bother me that much to be honest. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this door knocker, let's zoom in a bit here so you guys can see what's going on. I'm gonna put this door knocker behind that flower. See that little corner of the flower there? So I'm gonna put the door knocker kind of behind that so that we just get a little idea of some depth there. And then it has this Cool little, cool little knocker like that. That's pretty cool. I like that. Look at that. I mean, that just it, it brings it to life. You know, it definitely brings it to life. Um, let's do the door knob. I'm not sure about the mail slot. 
I might put that in there. I think it's it's kind of cool, maybe. But let's do the door handle at least. Let's try to not make it too perfect. It's not exactly how I wanted it, but oh well. Then there's a little. handle it comes off that way alright um, what are, I might suggest you make the step in front of the door so the door doesn't look like a box okay I'll get there, I'll get there. I think once I put the stuff on the door, it'll look more like a door instead of a box. But yeah, I kind of drew this line all the way around it, which could have been a mistake. It's probably a mistake. But that happens, you know? It happens sometimes. I mean, when you look at the reverence order, the step, I mean, it's it's not even... It's barely... You can barely even see a step there. I mean, it's... It's literally almost what I have there. Just, I mean, maybe I need to glaze that a little bit darker or something, but I mean, it's a step there is very, it's very subtle, very little. So we'll try to add a little bit of the hardware there. And then we'll do, let's, uh, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna make this a little less dark since it's in the sun. So this thing down here, since this is in the sun, just want to make it warm looking. So you guys can see like the way I, I paint these details and stuff, you know, I don't want, I'm not trying to make them perfect. It's not about things being perfect, you know. It's the viewer is gonna fill everything in. So if you guys see how I, how I drew this, it's all broken and stuff, you know. And it just gives it a kind of vibe of like kind of an old door anyway. It kind of helps with that. But it also just makes it more interesting. Like I don't even have to do much here, you know, just something like that. And, you know, you guys will fill in the rest, you know, like put a little, little thing there. Um, but, I mean, I think that's, do I do the mail slot or not? What do you guys think? I don't know. All right, we got 200 people watching. Wow, I appreciate you guys, man. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. This must be, it must have been an interesting photo or something on the, um, for this live stream. I'm glad you guys enjoy this one. See now, these little details really brought it to life. I think once I start adding these little vines to, and, and maybe some other leaf shapes, I think, uh, I think we'll, this will look pretty cool. Um, We have a negative for the nail slot, mail slot. We have say yes to the mail slot. Yeah, it, it, it feels like it needs something there. That's what I feel like. I feel like it needs just a little something there. But, um, yes, mailbox. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. You guys. Uh, sorry, Deborah. Well, I'm glad you got to see a lot of this. It's pretty much almost done. We just got to add, got to do a little bit of work to some of the greenery around the door and um, bring it to life. I think some more darks. We'll go in with some really dark darks a little bit. And um, yeah, I was going to do that. So.
You think the pipes help define that the door is recessed? You know, I don't really mind if it looks like the door is recessed or not. Um, to be honest, it doesn't really bother me. Um, let's see, what could I do? What could I do? I think, um, I don't think the pipes are really a great feature to really highlight in a painting like this. Um, maybe, maybe it could help, but if I do, yeah, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little iffy about that. What I could do, I think the bottom, it's a little bare down here. Um, I think if I just add some glazes of some warm colors and stuff, this is a good opportunity. Just some big strokes, we'll use a big brush. Just add in some, some tile type of shapes with a warm color, like a warm gray. Um, warm brownish gray, see what this looks like. Maybe a little bit of red in there. This is, I think we could introduce a little bit of red to this possibly, could be cool. Um, well, here goes, here goes nothing folks. We'll see if this works. So see what I mean there? We can just add a little bit of red in there and then maybe like one down here. Maybe not that straight. Not that dark, of course. Just like some broken kind of shapes. Maybe we can go cooler with some of them. Because I just want to try to differentiate the ground from the wall. So I think just adding a few little, not everywhere, just just keep that keep that soft in the corner. There's that step you guys want. Does that help at all? And then I think we can put like just a very small tile right here. Okay, I think it looks good. I think it looks kind of cool. It's just some subtlety down there. You know, we kind of soften some of this. Here, I'll try to show you guys the whole thing. At least sideways, you can see it now. So I think we're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere. Um, Okay, um, let's try to do some vines and stuff. So I'm gonna get a smaller brush, what I really don't like using a lot of the time, but uh, I will use it for you guys now. So this kind of like small liner brush. I usually sign my paintings with something like this, a number two round. I'm just gonna add some, a little bit of line work and then, you know, maybe we can go in with some darks. I think the leaves just need a little bit more work around this kind of area. But I think some viner, vinery, is that a word, vinery? We can add some, add some vinery. Um, so I'm just mixing up like a, kind of a middle green, maybe slightly cooler. Try not to use too much water because I, I want it, if I can, it doesn't feel like I can do it, but it'd be nice to get some dry brushing, but I think it's too much, too much water here. 
in this mixture. You guys can see this, just too much, too much water. So that's unfortunate. I'd like to try to make it thicker if I could. There we go. More paint, a little bit of water. Let's try to, because dry brushing would be really nice, give some texture and, you know, you don't want to get too detailed with with the lines like that. Uh, let's zoom in a bit, I guess. But these little lines here will be... Let's try to dry my brush off. Let's do that again. We're gonna add some dots too. Kind of like the, the effect of splattering. So there we go, we got some dry brushing there. It's very subtle, I mean this is small details, but I think it's gonna help in the end. I may do some brown ones as well, I learned that from the other day. I'll do some brown ones as well. Just to get it darker and show stems of flowers and stuff. This flower really bothers me. It's just, it's way too, way too uh, bold right there. Um, I'll deal with that later. But see, we're adding more interest, if you guys look. It's just adding more interest around the focal point and, uh, you know, we didn't have to do too much. And I'm probably not gonna do too much more. I don't wanna go too crazy with it, but I just kind of want to show, I want it to harmonize a bit more overall with the painting. So if you add it in one place, it's always good to add it in other places as well. Know what I'm saying? And I can soften some of these too, because some of them are just, eh, it's a little too, too bold, so we can just go over them with some things. But like I said, I'm gonna, I'm, st I'm still, I think I'm gonna add one more little layer of like shadows for some of these. We just need to go a little deeper, a little darker uh, in this area, around, uh, in the, in the, in the leaves. Um, So I will kill some of these lines as well when I do that. But anyway, I think that's kind of cool. And here is a little too, a little too much there. It's something that it's it's hard to see on camera. It's better in person. You know, it's one of those things where you have to just look at it in person, see it up close or whatever. Um, all right, let's, uh, I'm going to use a smaller brush now, like a number 10 round, and we're going to do, or I'm going to do, not you guys, you guys are just watching, but we're going to get a dark warm, really dark warm, mostly transparent red oxide, a little bit of ultramarine blue, maybe a little bit of green, something, I don't know, but, uh, a little bit of purple, I don't know, and, uh, this dark warm hopefully gonna bring more contrast so let's try this out let's see what happens and this is where I can really start working on those leaf shapes a bit more And 
Yep, yep, I'm getting there. Rotten brains, I'm getting there. Start getting in the dark shadows now. Trying anyway. I'm gonna keep these simple, of course. Yeah, that flower, I might have to kill that flower. That, that thing is like, bing, it's just sticking out there. Um, killed it. No remorse for that flower. Sorry, flower. Okay, how is it affecting the whole painting? That's what we have to pay attention to, right? We don't want to just get crazy blocking in shadows and stuff and not pay attention to how it's affecting everything. So I'm gonna get a little active here. Um, <laughs> we need a count, <laughs> Matias says we need a count of when Brandon says, Ultramarine blue and transparent oxide. Yeah, I think you do, because I use that mixture all the time. It's a great mixture, man. It's, it's... Gets you a nice gray, gets you a nice dark. Cool dark, warm dark. just works so I'm gonna I'm gonna stand up a little bit while I do this hope you guys don't mind I just need to try to focus here Let's hope I don't drop the brush or anything with this dark color on there. <laughs> that would be a disaster, right? So I'm trying to I'm trying to find a way. I think these are visually linked. Um, you know, I don't want it to be too chaotic, but I do need to put these darks in here, though. Okay, okay, okay. So I kind of made up all this greenery, so I'm just gonna have to make up the darks as well. Um, like where do I want to create some really dark shadows within this? See, having those dark shadows under there, it gives more context to these light areas. Right? That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to bring form, context, 
So those lighter areas show that they're kind of casting this, has this dark, deep shadow underneath, underneath them. Okay. <laughs> uh, you guys are crazy. Don't even know what you guys are talking about. Okay. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with this so far. Uh, this is some of this is a little too hard edged. Try to soften some of it or most of it. Um, I think it's coming along. I think it's coming along. Let's see if we can massage some of these edges to be softer. Let's do some darks under here. take the tape off because then I can actually look at it and see what it looks like but I kind of have to wait a little bit because um, I'm still kind of working at the edges of the paper here I didn't really uh, think about all this greeny it would give me a lot of trouble but it's coming out okay I think I think what it's missing you know what it's missing so very it's missing something very important missing uh, let's see do I have a scrap sheet of paper I'll just use this I guess it's missing some uh, let's see get some of this water off here it's probably the wrong time to do this because the paper is mostly wet but it's missing some splattering that's what I think it's missing in some of the greenery we kind of lost some of that in the beginning stages, so try to add some of that back in there, just some texture, just kind of trying to break up um, what was going on there. I just wanted to protect the door that I was working on. So see, we got a little bit more more life happening again, I feel. Probably need to add some more over here once this dries, but we can just dry this up real quick. Uh, let's see. Granddad Drawing says, I don't like it. I love it. Awesome job. Cool. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, the only problem with uh, do the splattering when the paper's wet is that the splatters kind of soften it's too much. So it, it's kind of good that I did it because some of them will soften and then I can always add harder ones once the uh, paint dries. I can add some harder um, uh, splatters and stuff. Cubs Wind says, I like that you blur the top of the door. Ooh, I think I need to charge this thing. It's running out of battery. Haven't charged it in a while. Yeah, the top of the door looks pretty nice, blurred. Um, I kind of 
put some uh, dark greenery over it anyway, but oh well. I kind of lost, There's a, there was a bit of wall and I, I lost it, I did too much greenery. Uh, but oh well. Um, oh, fireflies? No, I'm not doing any fire. <laughs> no fireflies. I know you're just kidding though. Um, Neil Cole asks, do you find that you miss the inherent texture of oils or acrylics when you're using watercolor? I try to dry brush a bit when I watercolor, but it just isn't the same as other mediums for me. Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, oils, I did, I do miss oils. I like, I really liked using thicker paint and getting the texture and feeling it. It's so smooth. But this thing is really dying. Um, that's unfortunate. Uh, but the one thing I don't miss with oils is I don't miss the chemicals, the cleanup, the messiness, the expensive materials. This thing literally just died on me. Okay, uh, where's the... I actually have the charger right here. I wonder if I can plug it in. And, uh... See if I can plug it in and use it at the same time, folks. Sorry, for, sorry about that. I should charge this thing every day or whatever, but I probably can't use it at the same time. But at least I can charge it now. Oh, there we go. Cool. Um. Yeah, I need. To, I'm gonna take the tape off here in a minute, and then. I might add a few more vines in there. Now that we have these darks in there, I can add, weave in a few more vines in certain areas. Um, a little, maybe more splatter. Maybe more splatter before I take the tape off. Just up here, a little bit, and then maybe more shadowing down here in this pot. Um, I think that's. I think it's pretty close. Um, I don't like how dark this is. This looks, this looks way too dark. It's really attracting my attention over there. I don't really like that. I'm not a fan of that. But, um. But yeah, I, I, Yeah, I'll set you right. I may need to add, I'll add some more pink into these flowers as well. They're just really small. That's a good idea, because especially on camera, it doesn't look very colorful. It's more colorful in real life, I'm telling you. But, um, okay, we're pretty dry here, I think. I'll keep that charging. Um, so I'll show you guys real quick on the webcam overall. This is what we got going on. I think it's my computer, too. My computer, I have this. There we go. So that's what it looks like so far. We're getting close, getting close to the end here. How long have I been on here? Hour and a half, okay, so we're getting close. I didn't realize the sun's going down a lot earlier now and on my computer I have this app that uh, makes the, it's kind of like an iPhone, it makes your uh, screen look way more orange so that it gets rid of the blue light. And uh, I didn't realize how warm it looked. But now we look all right. This is way too dark, I'm gonna have to lighten that up. But that's okay. Um, splattering. Stay focused, Brandon. Stay focused. One thing at a time. Cover up the door. Protect the door. And then we'll just do some nice dark splatters here. Okay. Feel good about that. There we go. Looks a little bit better. A little less flat. Know what I mean? Okay. That was stupid. I don't know why I did that. Uh, now we'll do... What, did, what was I going to do? I was going to lighten this up, I think. Because I'm just... I'm not digging it. I'm not digging it. It's a little too dark. It's just a little distracting. Uh, the reason... The reason... It's distracting is because it's so dark that it just looks flat rather than being dark. Um, 
and I just I need to simplify some of these darks together. But okay, I think that's I feel better about that. Possibly. Um, this light spot can be softened as well. Add pink to the flowers. That's right. Add pink to the flowers, and add some more vines. So. We got a lizard and crimson here. It's kind of a red, but we can add some purple into it. We can cool it off a bit. It'll look nice. It'll look nice. Okay. Um, would you mix the white pin? Sorry, folks. Would you mix the white pin you were using on the bear? No, I wouldn't put any white pin on here. It looks really nice. Thanks. I appreciate that. <clears throat> so I'm just going to add... Okay, we got way too much water on our brush here. Let's try this again. It's almost dinner time, folks. My stomach is starting to growl a bit. All right, that's pretty good, I think. Don't have to do it to all of them, just most of them, mostly all of them. And then, uh, what, what now, what now? What now, folks? Let's see. Let's see if we can get some nice dry brushing effects here. Some of these vines. I did get some dry brushing there. See that texture? It's really nice. Same with that. Just trying to show like stuff growing everywhere. Nothing too crazy. But uh, anyway, I think I'm done. I don't want to add too much. Um, <clears throat> I got some texture that I wanted. Just a little bit of detail there. <clears throat> <laughs> green person <laughs> for supporting Brandon. Yeah, thanks all supporters, man. I uh, really appreciate it. I think we take the tape off now. This is the moment of truth. <clears throat> the reveal, and we can see if that tape held up because I, I said it did at the beginning, or I said that it would. Let's see if it really did hold up. So there we go. We can see so far. No leaking of the paint or water underneath the tape. Let's see if see if that holds true all the way around. I mean, you guys saw how wet I was making the paper in some areas too. Looks like only a tiny little bit there, but that could just be I didn't put the tape down enough where the tape met. But uh, yeah, pretty clean. Looks good. I'll show you guys on the webcam real quick, just so you can see it far away. It gives the overall effect. You know, if you saw it on the wall or whatever.
pretty nice, I think. Um, show you guys like this. There we go. Um, cool. I think I'm happy with this. I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, Oh, paint a rose bush? That'd be cool. That'd be cool. I can add that to my list. That'll be difficult. That's what it will be. I have a whole list. I'm going to add this to my computer. I just wrote rose brush. Rose bush. Rose bush. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, so there you guys go. Uh, there's the final painting. Like I said, you can check out my website, shaverfineart.com. I got drawings and other paintings on there. You can see better photos of the paintings on my website, you know, that's kind of, or my Instagram. And I also have a page where you can donate to me on there. You can support me on my Patreon. I got some t shirts and I got some music on there you can check out. Just instrumental music I make in my own time. But uh, anyway, yeah, you guys can check all that stuff out. I'll be posting this one on there probably for sure if uh, nobody wants it. Should I add the mail slot? That's the last, I, I think that's really the finishing touch, right? I feel like, um, I feel like the, the mail slot is important. Um, shout out to my, all my green people. Not my aliens, just the green people, you know what I mean? Can you paint a German Shepherd? Okay, I can put that on the list. That's going to be tough, too. But I will try. German Shepherd. Are there any other kinds of... Sh I guess there are other kinds of Shepherds, huh? Like Australian Shepherd and stuff. I was like, why are they always German? Like, why can't they be anything else? Um, the mail slot, yeah. Because it, it looks kind of empty without it, right? I mean, it feels like... Feel like I need that and there's a little bit of it that's gonna be in light so this could be this could be a great opportunity this could be a great opportunity to make it darker in the shadow a little lighter and warm in the Sun hopefully I can do it the way I want probably won't look as as good as I wanted like I should have made this lighter and warmer but it is black, I mean, so what, what can I do? What can you do? Okay. Yeah, I mean, they gotta get mail, right? You know, this is, it's very important. Okay. Let's zoom, let's, oh, almost ruined the painting. I just wanted to zoom it in for you guys so you guys see the amount of detail I don't put into this kind of thing. Look at that, one stroke. Looks pretty straight, I think. So that's only about half of it. The other half, let's see if we can make it look cool. Let's see, or warm, I mean, not cool. Cool as in cool, but warm as in hot. Oh, did she? <laughs> she put all caps. I got to get rid of that, I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh... So it's probably hard to see that on the camera, the difference there. It's like a subtle difference of like shadow and, and warmth shadow and light maybe I could even lighten it up slightly but it gives a really cool effect it gives a pretty cool effect when you see it in person but this camera is just not that good for for showing it unfortunately um, said that the whole time but it's true it's definitely true um, yeah I think that really made the I think that really made the uh, really made the painting here um, 
Is there anything else? Is there anything else I'm missing? You know, did the, does the wall need to be a darker shadow? Is that fine? I think it's fine. Possibly. Although, if I have to ask that question, I mean... Maybe it could be darker. Let's see. Just very, very slightly. Just glazing it. It's almost just changing the temperature, making it a little cooler. Maybe just a little darker up under here. Just trying to intensify the light effect. Know what I mean? So, you know, something like that. Maybe darker over here as well. There we go. I could even, uh, to really, because in reality, there actually is a warmer shadow. It, I'm, I'm, <laughs> this is very daring of me to do, but I think it needs it. I think it needs it looking at it. Um, very slight, hopefully. There is like a warm reflected light shadow up here, but I feel like the door just needs to be darker up here. I know I'm, I'm I know I'm, this is, it's dangerous, it's dangerous, but I'm doing it. Like I said, I want to enhance that light effect. So just by darkening that shadow a little bit up there, it just kind of deepens it. It's probably even hard to, hard to tell that I did anything. But, uh, I think that, to me, it looks better. It looks better like that. Um, we're just putting some small finishing touches here, folks. You know, just some very small. Trying to show that door's recess like you guys were complaining about earlier, or excuse me, talking about earlier. <laughs> there, does that, that give the illusion? I think that helps. See, it's these small little things sometimes, like right at the end, when you think the painting's finished, you gotta just push it just a tiny bit more, you know? Just a tiny bit more to bring it together. You don't want to say it's done before it's done, you know what I mean? Ooh, I just remember one thing I was going to do. The I needed more shadow on that pot because it looks very flat. And then I think I'll be done. Call it an evening. Wow, 212 people watching. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate everybody. If you guys want to become a member on my channel, you just hit the join button underneath. It's $1.99 a month, I believe. Just helps me support my channel, do these live streams every day. You know, a, like a month or so ago, I bought this second monitor. It's kind of expensive, so it just helps me with things like that to kind of make the stream go a little more smoothly, hopefully, for all of us. Um, do like some leaf shadows coming down. It's kind of cool. There we go. That looks a bit more, looks a bit more like it, right? Ooh, kind of got a little too light there. There we go. Happy with that. We could even do the same thing over here a bit. Let's kind of darken some of these. Anyway. I think we're good. I think we're good there. I 
I feel pretty, I feel really happy about this one. So, um, yeah. What's going on, Raymond? Raymond Man 09, what's happening? Hmm. Harry Potter's cool, but I never, I never read any of the books. I tried to when I was a kid, and I'm not good at reading, or I didn't used to be good at reading. That was my weak point. So I like, I like the movies, but um, yeah, I think the movies are pretty cool. Um, I haven't watched them in a long time though. But yeah, anyway, I think, uh, I think this is good, man. I think this is good. I'm gonna get off here in a minute. Um, I really don't think it needs any more else anything else just maybe soften this kind of shape but i don't really like what's going on there um yeah yeah this uh looks pretty cool pretty cool um you know i'm not i don't know if that i'm a biggest fan of all these darks that i did you know it was it was very it was pretty challenging but uh Overall, not a bad painting, you know. I could sit here and mess with this all day, but I think when you look at it as a whole, I think it, it works, you know. I think it works. Um, so thanks, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to do... What am I doing tomorrow? I don't even know. Go check your subscriptions page, you know, the page no one ever clicks on on YouTube. Go check that out, and you can see what I'm doing tomorrow and Friday. Uh, I already have them scheduled. I'm going to be drawing tomorrow. But yeah, be sure to check out my website. I'm gonna be drawing on some toned paper like the drawings you see here. Um, there's some watercolors and stuff as well, all for sale. And also a support page, you can check that out. Other stuff on my website as well. I have a blog and all kinds of stuff. But um, yeah, I'm doing a drawing tomorrow of something I cannot remember. A dome or something, I think. Uh, some kind of architecture, but. Anyway, any last minute questions? Any last minute questions? Uh, ask now any last minute questions once again thanks to all my green people supporting me appreciate it um, but if there's no last minute questions I'll wait like another 30 seconds just to make sure I don't want to leave anybody hanging um, Sue Dean says, Halloween painting? Uh, I don't have any Halloween painting planned as of yet. Uh, I was thinking of doing something, maybe not Halloween, but maybe something like a pumpkin lit by candlelight. Like some kind of candle, like uh, with candles and like a pumpkin kind of still life looking thing. You know, I think it would be challenging to do like a lighting scenario like that where it's mostly dark and then lit by this warm light. So that might be pretty cool. Um, but uh, anyway, all right, folks, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one tomorrow. Uh, take care of yourself.